so this is the effect that I replicated using the inspiration from the original video. And it's very easy to do, no plugins again. So what you want to do first, go to where you want this effect to begin. I want it to begin about here. So not at the very beginning of this first or second scene, but just a couple of frames after. Select the clip, go to edit, add a freeze frame. We're gonna be doing this a lot, so just get used to that. Uh, we're gonna have the still image, just drag this up and trim this to your desired length. Then what you wanna do is you want to go to effects, go to masks, go to draw mask, I drag that onto your video. Then you wanna make your selection on these four corners. Once you have your first one made, all you gotta do now is just, you can just go to transform, just add a keyframe here. And then what you wanna do is go about halfway maybe, or just under halfway. And then what you wanna do is just go and move this scale and we're gonna make this smaller. Ignore this video here for the time being. You can get confused with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable it for now so you guys don't get confused. So I'm gonna hold option, drag upwards to make another copy. I'm gonna move this one up. And I'm gonna do the same thing since we have another copy. We're working with the top clip. We're gonna to go to scale on. We're gonna make the, this one smaller. And we're gonna to go to the Y axis. We're gonna move this one down just like that. So it looks like this. Same thing, option, drag upwards, select the top clip, go to scale all and make this one smaller again. I'm gonna go a little bit more extreme on this one here and make sure that this one's centered between those business cards and one more time for the fun of it. So this one here, go to scale all and make this one even smaller and adjust the position. There you go. So now it's gonna look something like this. Once it's here, all you really gotta do is gonna be about, it ends here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag to this exact point. So I'm gonna trim that there. I'm gonna trim all of those clips like that. I'm gonna highlight all these clips, I should say. Right click and group them, new compounds clip. I'm gonna name this effect 02. And then to replicate this, instead of doing this over again, literally all you gotta do is hold option, drag it to the right, have that video selected, and then hit reverse clip, and then you're done. So if I push play, looks just like that. And then re-enable the video clip by pressing V, and it's gonna look just like this. Of course, we've gotta kind of keyframe it a little bit to match the the movement of the camera. So I'm going to highlight both of these again. I'm going to name this Effect 02. And all I got to do is move the play at the beginning again, go to transform, add a keyframe, go to the end, about one frame to the left. Then all you got to do is move this down to a corner. I'm going to be working with this corner here. I'm going to rotate this now. So I'm going to click and drag something like this and I'm going to scale this up so it matches that last frame on that same size of that business card. So once it's there, I'm going to click done and if I push play, looks just like that. All right guys, so if you haven't yet visited my store, I highly suggest you guys do. The latest one is this one here. So you can add this to music videos, YouTube videos, vlogs, whatever the case may be. It really stylizes your clips. Link is going to be in the description. Let's get back to the tutorial. Now I'm in the game. I was on the bench. On the bench. First I was writing. It's really easy to do if I push play. It's gonna look just like this. And it's very, very similar to the original video. And uh, let me show you how to do it. So, so we're gonna move the playhead to the beginning. We're gonna select it. We're gonna go to edit, add freeze frame as always. And we're gonna zoom out here. And this is the, the uh, image. So we're gonna click and drag upwards, trim it to the length of this clip. We're gonna move it over to the left. Okay, and then from here, we want this effect to start about here. About eight or nine frames or so is good. The longer the better, the smoother the transition. So once we're here, all we gotta do is go into effects. We're gonna go to masks, draw mask, add that on that. And we're gonna go ahead and just kind of click to make a selection of this G-Wagon. Perfect, we're gonna go back to fit. So it looks just like this. And once we're here, we're gonna add another draw mask. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to effects, masks, draw mask, and we're gonna drag this one here. Then in this case, we're gonna make a selection of the window. So all I gotta do is click here and drag outwards to make a curve, something like this. And once you're finished, click that. We're gonna hit invert mask. So now we have our first one here, which is just gonna be the car with the empty window, which is what we want. And now all we gotta do is hold option, drag upwards, and we can work with the bottom clip. What we're gonna do is we're gonna disable one of the draw masks or we can click on invert mask. So you're gonna have to turn off the, the top draw mask and, and make sure your invert mask is unchecked for the bottom draw mask. And then just re-enable those clips. And then at this point, what you want to do is move the playhead at the beginning, go to the draw mask that's enabled, go to transforms, go to position. We're going to add a keyframe, go to the Y axis and move this all the way down. From this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go about halfway, maybe a little bit more than halfway. And then we're gonna go back and just move this back up to about here. So now when we go back, it's gonna animate just like this. 
I'll wait both of those, right click, create a grouped clip. So now it's gonna be like this. So now once we're here, we're gonna create that zoom in effect, which is super easy. We're gonna go to the transform tool. We're gonna add a keyframe right up at the top left. And we're gonna start off not like this. So we're gonna start off really big and we're gonna drag this so that the window is about centered. And so we're gonna keep doing this until we fill in this here. So the video has to be within this empty area, get it as centered as possible. Once you're here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go about, you can go about one frame to the left here, and then we're gonna go to scale, we're gonna type in 100%, type enter, X axis zero, Y axis zero, and I push play. It looks just like that, and you're pretty much done. So that's a really quick one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move the playhead around this point right here. I'm gonna press Command B to split that clip. We're gonna move the playhead towards the end around here and press Command B. So now we have a single clip and we can delete the rest if we want. I'm just gonna cut it around maybe here. Delete the end and then for this one, I'm going to have it like that. So we're just really working with this one here. This is gonna be more of like a just to show you what it will look like if it transitions there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a copy. So I'm gonna rename this clip to original, just so you guys don't get confused. I'm gonna hold option and drag upwards and we're gonna name this again, we're gonna change it to copy. Um, and then from this point, all you gotta do is go into the effects, we're gonna go into masks, go to draw mask and drag that onto your video. Now, once you're at this point, all you gotta do is make a selection of your subject. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a very rough selection with this one, just because I don't wanna take too much of your guys' time. Um, but if you guys are actually doing this, I would suggest you guys um, actually get very, have some time set aside so you can do this and make it look really cool. So I'm gonna go here and just finish it off like that. Very simple selection, but you guys get the idea. Of course, you would add, want to add more points. Um, but anyways, once you're at this point, what you wanna do is go in next to the draw mask in the inspector window, go to the control points, add a keyframe there, and open up the transform right here. And we're gonna add a keyframe next to position as well as in rotation. So we're gonna have three keyframes as well as scale. Why not in case you decide to, to increase the scale. So once you're at this point, all you gotta do is either go frame by frame and adjust this according to how much your subject is moving. What I like to do is I like to go um, every two frames and then adjust it. You can either click and drag each point or you can click in between two points and drag that line like that. Or you can click in between anywhere, right? Anywhere in, inside of the mask and drag the whole entire point. What I like to do is I like to, depending if the subject is not moving a lot, maybe around here, I might just want to move it a little bit or shift it a little bit to the right, depending on your subject, of course. And right there is fine. I might want to move this piece up here and just go frame by frame, maybe every other two frames, depending what the frame rate of your video is and how much movement there is. Now, if there's less movement, the easier it's going to be to keyframe this. All right, guys, so at this point, his body's not shifting that much, so all I'm really doing is clicking and dragging and shifting the actual whole entire mask to the right a little bit. So I'm just going frame by frame, and of course, you're gonna have way more points than I do. This is just to show you how to actually create the effect. All right, guys, so I think I finished the selection here of the keyframing, and of course, this is not the best <laughs> selection that I could have done, but this is just to show you guys, of course, how to create the effect. Now, right now there's no feathering, so it looks very harsh on the edges. So what I wanna do is I wanna go into the draw mask, go into the feather, and instead of dragging the feather to the right, which will increase the featherness outwards. We're gonna do the opposite and create the feather towards the inside. So you won't really be able to tell because if we enable the background footage, you can't tell that there's an actual feather going on, of course, because it's the same exact video, but if we disable it for now, you can see that it has a nice soft edge and that's what we want to do. Now, once we're at this point, all we have to do now, and this is where it gets a little bit complicated, but I try to simplify it as much as I can. We're gonna make another copy of this one. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold option and drag upwards again, and we're gonna rename this one to something else like uh, original two. So we're gonna type original two. Once you're at this point, what you wanna do is we have the, um, so if I disable this one, we have the original video clip, we have the second copied original clip, and then we have the actual panning clip at the very top, as you can see, with the mask applied. 
What I want to do is I'm going to disable the top clip just for now so you guys don't get confused. We're going to select the original clip, the copied clip, and we're going to go into, I might want to zoom out a little bit to maybe 50%. We're gonna click on the transform button here, and if you're on the latest version of Final Cut Pro 10, but anyways, what you wanna do is have this button checked. Now, if you don't have that, it's totally fine. You don't have to have that button, but this just shows you the transparency grid, showing you if you move it outside of the frame, where this is located. If you don't have this on the latest version of Final Cut, it's just gonna look like this, and that's totally fine, but if you do have it, enable it by clicking this button. What I wanna do now is I wanna to go to the very beginning of the, uh, clip here by moving the playhead at the beginning we're gonna select the original clip number two right the copied clip we're gonna go into transform go to position and we're gonna drag the X axis to the right now I don't want to enable the actual transform button in this uh, setting here I'm gonna click done I just want to move it so we're gonna click and drag this to the right and if your video was filmed in 1920 by 1080, just full HD, it's very easy, just type in 1920. And if we go back to transform, you're gonna see that it's aligned perfectly to the right, and you can do this on the left too if you want. And you can also do it on the top or in the bottom if you want it to come up or down, doesn't matter, I'm just doing it this way. If you filmed in, or if your video's in uh, 720p, all you gotta do is type in 1280 here in the X axis, and you click done, okay? Um, just make sure you don't have this enabled like this. You wanna make sure you're just doing it in here with no keyframes. Cool, so once you're there, we're gonna select the original copied clip, so original two and the original video. We're gonna go into back to the transform button here, and now you're gonna see that we can move both of these, um, but we're not gonna move it on the actual screen itself. We're gonna to have to do it again in transform. And uh, cool, so once we're here, um, we're actually going to create a keyframe. So we're going to add a keyframe there. And this is going to add it to both of the clips because they're both selected. We're going to, I don't know, run it for a couple of seconds. If I push play, I might want to run it around a second, 15, 14, something like that. Uh, we'll do 15 for, for, that, for now. Uh, and then we're going to go to the x-axis and just drag it to the left, all the way to the left. Try to get it as close as you can to 1920 or 1280 if you filmed in uh, 720, and we're gonna go right there, perfect. That's all you gotta do. So now if you move the playhead to the beginning, it's going to animate it. So it's gonna push by push play. It's gonna look like this, super smooth. It's just two keyframes, it's that simple. Now that you have that done, click off of it, and the both of the clips should still be selected. Right click on that and go to new compounds clip to group them together, and we're gonna name this uh, we're gonna name this uh, panning. Now that we have that, we're gonna create a blur. So if we drag this, you're gonna see that there's a line in between that. And I'm showing you guys this with no plugins, of course. We're gonna go into the effects, go into blur, go to uh, directional blur, and drag that onto the panning clip, the grouped clip. And now what we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the play to the beginning. We're gonna go into directional. We're gonna type in 220 at the beginning. You can do like something really dramatic like that if you want. I think 20 is fine. Uh, and add a keyframe. You can also change the angle if you drag it like that. I don't think that looks good, but do, do it like that. Um, again, if you're gonna do it from the bottom, just move it to the bottom like that or other direction if you prefer that way. Uh, we're gonna do it clockwise though for, for this video. And we're gonna go in, into the timeline and we're gonna again go to right where it stops, which is about go here right there so you might have to go frame by frame using the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard but don't actually have it stop right there go about two frames to the right a little bit and then go to amount and type in zero the reason we added two more frames is so that this here stays blurred a, you know at least two more frames longer so that we don't really see it that harsh of an edge if that makes sense so now if I push play, it's gonna look like this. Super clean, super smooth. And now once we enable the actual masked subject, it's gonna look like this. Again, this is why we have the feather so that it's nice and soft. This is just a rough selection, but that's just the idea, of course. If I push play, this is my take on it, of course. It looks very identical to the original video. No presets or plugins on this one as well. And if you guys are enjoying the video so far, if you guys could leave a like and a comment down below, that would be much appreciated. All right, so what you wanna do 
for this specific transition is have two clips, so two different scenes of the same artist, of course. So the first clip is about a second long, and the second clip here is about a second long as well. Of course, you're going to need two screenshots. So if I go over to the project window here, so all I did is I went on to Polo G's Instagram and I took a screenshot of one of his posts. So the first one is of his bio. So you want to take a screenshot of whatever you're going to be using. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take another screenshot of the middle top photo or video. For this to work, you have to have the same dimensions of whatever the post is. So if this is a square image, your video, which should be this one here, has to be the same exact ratio. So in this case, if this was a square, this clip would have to be a square as well. So we're gonna click and drag this right on the actual timeline. So something like this, now that we have that in the timeline, we're gonna go over to transform, go to scale all, and we're gonna type in 390 so that it fills those black edges, or you can just increase it and go like this. So 390% or 390%. And then what you're gonna do from there is you're gonna move the plate at the beginning. You're gonna go over to the position and you're gonna move this down until we see the Instagram username, but there's a little line here. So you're gonna just make sure that's not showing. So we don't want, you can if you want to have posts here, but ideally the original video started about here. So we're gonna go about there. We're gonna add a keyframe next to this at the beginning. So add a keyframe there. We're gonna go about this long. So 15 frames on this one. So we're gonna go over to the Y axis and we're gonna move this all the way down to about here until it kind of shows the next post, but just before it. So right about here. So now when I go back and I push play, it'll look just like that. If you think it's too slow, Right click on the first clip, go to show video animation and extend this second keyframe out. So I think like this is perfect. Now on that last keyframe, which is about here, you're gonna press once on the arrow key on the right to go one frame over, you're gonna add another keyframe. And then from that second keyframe, you're gonna go a bit longer to about a second longer. So depending on how long you want this to last, then you're gonna go over to the position X and you're gonna drag that over to the left or to the right, depending how you want this to look, but I'm gonna move it over to the right. So now when I go back and I push play, it'll look just like that. We're gonna trim that down to about here. So once it ends, we're gonna go one frame over as well. So that looks pretty good. So now that we have that, we're gonna to go to the first clip that we wanna use as our main clip. So we're gonna drag this one right above. We're going to trim this down to match the first screenshot. We're gonna go over to transform and we're gonna go over to position Go to Y and just drag this down. So drag it down to match that first clip or the, the actual post. You're gonna add a keyframe. We're gonna go frame by frame. So press right on the arrow key and you're gonna see that it shifts. So we're gonna actually make sure that we're just tracking where the post is. So about here. So just keep doing that until it's completely out of the frame. Right on that last one, we can move it all the way out of the frame. So when we go back and we push play, you'll see it looks just like that, it's keyframed. So once it kind of pans out to the right here, we don't need to add anything, but we do need to move our second shot there. So we're gonna move this clip over down like so. So if I go through, it should look like this. Now you could leave it like this. I mean, that definitely works, but I wanna make it a little bit more interesting. So before we move that down, we're gonna go over to the second screenshot, which is the one of this one here. We're gonna click and drag this and move it right to the second clip here. Okay, so from there, we're gonna go over to scale all. We're gonna type in 390%. We're gonna move this up. So move this up so that this middle square kind of icon is actually in the middle of this project window. You can check by going over to view, show horizon. And right now it's a little bit off. So we're gonna go over to Y and we're gonna move this up like that. And then you're gonna notice if you go back to 25%, this anchor point, if we go to transform, this little circle with a plus needs to be centered as well. So you can do that by going over to anchor, go to Y, since we're moving up and down, we want this to be right in the middle. So once it's centered where that needs to be, we're then gonna go to position on the Y axis and we're gonna move this back down so that it matches the yellow horizon line. So if we go back to fit, you can now see that if we move up and down, this will now have it so it's centered exactly like so. Shift right on the arrow key. Right at this point is where we want to create the our first keyframe. So we're gonna go over to scale all, we're gonna add a keyframe there. We're gonna go a couple of frames over as well, or about here, go back to transform, go to scale all and bring this up all the way until the that little box fills up the whole entire window and click done. 
So now when we go back and I push play, it'll look just like that about here. And we're gonna press Command B to delete the end piece because we don't need that. So now it's gonna look like this. So once you're there, we're gonna move the second screenshot below the first one here. Ignore this video for now. I'm gonna press V to disable it. But we want this to start kind of like this. So there's no black background. So we're gonna move this so that it fills that black edge, which is about here. So we're gonna move this over here. So now if I go like this, right here is where it's going to start to move, which is exactly what we want. So right before this moves up, we're gonna re-enable the clip. And this is our, our second scene here. We're gonna click and drag and move this right below that one here. So it'll look like this. So we're just stacking clips on now. So now with this one applied, what we're going to do, we're gonna move this all the way over. So it's like this. And once we're there, we're gonna move the plate at the beginning. And we're gonna go to opacity. We're gonna bring this down, okay? Once we can see a little bit underneath, we're gonna go to effects. We're gonna go to masks. We're gonna add a draw mask onto the uh, clip here. We're gonna make a selection of the box. So we're gonna click once, hold shift, hold shift again, hold shift again, and shift again, and then let go and then click once. And that will finish off the selection. Go to opacity and bring this back up to 100%. And then you can re-enable the main clip here. This is just getting in the way, but we're gonna disable that for now. So just before it goes up, we're gonna add a keyframe there. So go to transforms, go to scale and add a keyframe there. Press right on the arrow key. And then you're just gonna bring this up to fill that square. So you just keep doing that until we don't see any of the, the image below it. So we're just gonna keep doing that. And then from here, we're gonna zoom, we're gonna go all the way up to 300%. So now when we go back and re-enable the first screenshot, we're gonna push play and it looks just like that. Super clean and easy to do. And then this of course would go and you know continue with the next clip, but that's how to use a really quick and easy Instagram post transition. What we're gonna use is a freeze frame. So we're gonna go to the beginning here, wherever we wanna use to transition to. Just go back to edit, add freeze frame. And for this one, we're gonna trim this down as well to the desired length. So something like this, and I'm gonna drag it upwards. I'm gonna move this over and I'm gonna extend this out. So this part is the most important part. This is really how long you want this effect to last. Get the end of that clip, match it to that first clip. Go to effects, distortion. You're gonna go all the way to the bottom and gonna to go to underwater. So add that on top. And this will actually make it look like it's a video and that it's animating, but it's really a still image, which is kind of crazy. So if I push play, it'll look like this and then it'll kind of go back to the original clip. Now what we wanna do is kind of use some areas of this clip to transition smoothly from the first clip because if we just go like this, it's kind of boring and there's no actual transition happening. So we're gonna go over to Luma. So we're gonna go over to King and we're gonna add a Luma keyer onto that. So the reason we add a Luma keyer is to show or hide certain areas of you know light and dark. So in this case, there's a lot of uh, dark areas in this clip or freeze frame. So we're gonna click on the Luma keyer and we're gonna move these little handles over to the left to show a little bit of the first clip here. Now we don't wanna move it all the way to the end or to the beginning because if we move the highlights to the shadows, that will bring up the uh, black areas as well. So we don't wanna do that. We kinda of wanna find a happy medium and you can also do the shadows and move them down over to the right as well. So play around with this to get the desired look that you're going for. Kinda of wanna do something like this, okay? So if I push play, it'll look like this. Now I want to ease this end part to this clip here. So to do that, we're gonna go over to underwater and we're gonna make sure we have the same values applied. We can go one, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna go over to refraction. So we're gonna add a keyframe. We're gonna go to the end of that one, go one frame over to the left and we can bring the refraction all the way down. So it'll look something like this. And then for the beginning part, we're gonna go over to the transitions, go to dissolves and add a cross dissolve. Delete the end and if I push play, we can kind of do something that looks like this. Now we do want to also adjust the mix here. So we're gonna select the clip. We're gonna go about towards the beginning and we're gonna go over to mix under Luma here. So we're gonna add a keyframe next to mix, go to the end, go one frame to the left, and we're gonna drag this all the way to the left. And when I push play, it'll kind of show the full image. If I push play, it's gonna look something like this. And it's relatively easy to do. It only takes a couple of keyframing to do this. So place your second shot right before the first clip, 
that you want to transition to. So this is going to be our main clip. So at the very beginning, we're going to use whatever is in this uh, frame as a transition. So we're going to be using Kid Leroy as our uh, main subject. So we're going to go over to edit. At the top, we're going to go down to add freeze frame. Select the middle clip, which is just this still image. Drag it up and move it to the left and trim the end to the middle of both of those clips and then make sure that you have the desired length that you want it to be. Ideally you want this to be relatively quick here so something like this is cool. Go over to the effects tab and you're going to go down to the masks. You're going to go to draw mask and drag that onto your clip. You're going to go onto your draw mask and just make a selection of your subject. All right, so once you finish off on that first point, it's gonna look something like this, and go back to fit. And if you want, you could add a feather to this so you can feather out the edges so it's a little bit better. What you're gonna do now is move the playhead at the beginning, go over to the transform here, so you can see transform, crop, and distort. So you're gonna go over to the left and click on transform. You're gonna go zoom out of the timeline. So I'm gonna go about 25%. I'm going to first scale this up. Okay, we haven't added any keyframes yet. So we're gonna scale this up quite a bit. And I'm gonna move this to the left because I want this to go in from the left. It's gonna go over to the right and then it's gonna go back into the original uh, position that it was. So we're gonna add a keyframe here. So click add keyframe there and this will add it to the full entire transform settings. And under distort, we're gonna have to do this as well. So add a keyframe next to distort on all of those keyframes. We're gonna go ahead and disable the distort because if you have this enabled, it will, you won't be able to see your image. So just make sure that's unchecked. And we're gonna go about, about halfway and we're gonna move the X position over to the right. So just move this to about here maybe. And then from there, what we're going to do is go one frame over to the right. And then now that we have that, we're gonna just move this back into the original position. So under position X and Y, type in zero. For X, type in zero for Y. And then for scale, we're gonna type in 100% and click enter. If you think this part is too fast, right click on the video and go to show video animation and extend this outwards. From here, we might as well do it again. So on X axis, we're gonna type in zero, Y zero, and for scale 100%, press enter. That way it's a bit smoother, as you can see. If I push play, it's coming in from the left. We added a keyframe here, where, which is where it stops. And then the, the third frame is gonna be the original scale. So zero, zero, 100% under transform. So once we have that set, now we're gonna go over to the distortion. So we're gonna go and click on this down arrow, click distort, and under distort, we're gonna enable this and make sure we can see it. So go a couple of frames in. And once it's there, we're gonna move the top piece here, hold shift, so it doesn't move left and right. We might as well do this one as well. So we're just really playing around with this as well. And if we need to scale this up even more, we definitely can. And then we're gonna go about here. So from this point, we're gonna add some more keyframes. You can also just hit this little plus icon and this will add it to all of them. And you're gonna go one frame over to the right again, all the way till where it finishes, which is about here. And then you're gonna type in under all these values to type in zero. So now when we go back and we click done, it'll look like this. So now that you have that, we're gonna add the um, kind of blur effect. So we're gonna go over to your effects, blur and directional blur and add that onto your clip. So now it'll look a little bit more dynamic. So we're gonna increase its blur. So I push play, it'll look just like that. If you want it to be a bit more dramatic, you can of course increase it even more. And this is the version that I created if I push play. It's really quick because I mean, I don't really have that much footage to work with. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have your main clip here that you wanna transition onto the next clip. So hold option, drag upwards, go to the effects, go to masks, add a draw mask. And what you're gonna do is just select the car. So in this case, I'm gonna select the hood of this car. So something like so, and I'm gonna zoom out to 50%. I'm gonna go around, finish that off. And now if we disable the bottom clip, you should have just the car hood selected. I'm gonna select the top clip. I'm gonna go into transforms and under control points, add a keyframe, do the same for position under transform. And then you're gonna go frame by frame to where if the uh, points move, just reposition these back to the original uh, location, which should be about here. So this is what I got here, something like this. 
Now that we have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click off of this. I'm going to increase the feather, move the right clip in between this clip here. So it's going to be kind of like a sandwiched clip. You're going to select the top clip, go to the beginning of this clip here, and you're going to go to the transform and you're going to add a keyframe next to position. So add a keyframe there. You're going to go to the end, go one frame to the left, go to the Y axis and move this down. So now if I push play, it'll kind of animate down but it's kind of boring, so we want to make it a little bit more dynamic. We're going to move this playhead back, and we're going to go to rotation, add a keyframe, and then select the clip, the last to second frame. Under transform, we're going to go to rotation, and we're going to move this to a positive number to roughly seven. So now it's kind of tilting a little bit, so it looks just like that. And we're going to scale this up a little bit as well. So we're going to add a keyframe next to scale. Same thing, under transform, we're going to scale this up just a tad. So now if I push play, it'll look just like that. From there, all you're gonna do is add a blur effect to the bottom clip. So select the bottom clip, go to effects, go to blur, go to Gaussian and add that onto that last clip. So now it's gonna look like this. And from there, what I wanna do is kind of start it about maybe here. So we're gonna move the amount to zero, add a keyframe, go to the second clip where it starts to transition and increase this to 50. So now it's gonna look kind of like this. It's gonna happen very quick. Uh, the, the actual second clip is also going to need a blur. So go to the effects, add a Gaussian blur, and we're going to start this off at 50 at the beginning. So add a keyframe, and then you're going to go to where it finishes the transition. So about here, and we're going to move the amount to zero. So now if I push play, it looks kind of like this, but of course, the longer the actual effect is, the smoother it will look. So let's move on to the third effect. This is the third effect, and this one's really cool, and this is one of my favorite ones in this uh, actual tutorial. And this one, again, no plugins or presets. So if I push play, you can do something like this. I want this to be a freeze frame, so I'm gonna go up at the top. I'm gonna go to edit. I'm gonna go to add a freeze frame. I'm gonna zoom back in, and I'm gonna click and drag this upwards. So if I push play, it'll just kind of stay stuck like this on that frame. And I want it to be roughly this, long. I think that's perfect. Go into the effects, go to mask, add a draw mask onto the new freeze frame. And you just want to kind of make your uh, selection here. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but since it's a still image, it can be as precise as possible if you want. It's not actually moving. So once you have your uh, selection, you're gonna click off of the draw mask and you can increase or decrease the feather. Click on this transform button. Okay, so it'll look like this. So add a keyframe there at the beginning, go about halfway first. And then we're gonna rotate this to maybe something like this. So it's gonna go about here, it's gonna stop, and we're gonna go one frame to the left at the end and move this down like that, all the way out of the frame. I click done, and then if I push play, it looks like that. If you wanna make this slower or faster of a animation, just right click and go to show video animation. I can adjust the transform keyframe. So we're gonna move this outwards a little bit. And then this one, we're gonna move it about here. So when I push play, I want it to stay like this and then kind of spin, and then it will kind of go down. Now to make this effect a lot more interesting, we're gonna create a blur. So we're gonna to go to effects, blur, and we're gonna to go to the directional blur, add that on top, move the keyframe to the beginning. We're gonna change the direction of this to up like so. And we're gonna move the amount to zero, add a keyframe, and go to where it starts, so about here. And we're gonna increase this quite a bit here. So we're gonna move this up like that. Make sure we add a keyframe next to angle. So add a keyframe next to angle right here. And then go right to where it spins about here, skipping a couple of frames. And then once it's here, we're gonna move this and move it downwards. And then once it's here, we're gonna just move this down like so. We're gonna zoom out, and if I push play, it looks like that. Yeah, now I'll wrap the o, what you know about the west side. So if you guys head on over to kingtutspro.store.selfi.store, again, link is in the description of this video. Please consider using the coupon code GET48OFF so you guys can save 15% off at checkout for the first 48 hours that this video is released. So share it with your friends if you think it's a really great one and a must have. All right, so I'm on my desktop now and what you wanna do is go onto the pack. So once you purchase and download the pack, it's gonna be in a zip file. And I also have the LUT pack here. And if you guys go to my main page on the Selfie store, you also have the LUT pack there as well that you guys can purchase, which contains 15 amazing LUTs. 
uh, but the transitions here are really great. So once you open up the folder, you're gonna have 20 assets and all of these assets or videos are transparent. So you don't have to do really anything at all. You just drag it above your media and you're done. So the first one's gonna be the blue lens flares, which looks like this. And then we have the next one, which is the flame dust. Then we have the Lambo smoke here. Then we have the micro paper blue here. We have orange, we have pink, purple, but uh, we have weed leaf here. So again, the cannabis leaf uh, transition. We then have the TV scan texture and we have the sliding volt door, which will require very minimal keyframing. And we have the diamonds. Then we have TV glitch scan, which is another great one. We have the lightning uh, kind of flash with glow on there, on there. So we have blue, yellow, and green. And you can also change the color of this in your editing program if you wish. You have the fanning hundreds. Then you have the uh, kind of red solo cups here, which looks like that. You have the G-Wagon window, and then you have the liquid lead kind of mercury transition. Looks so, so good. All right, so to use the actual pack in Final Cut Pro 10, all you got to do is import them into Final Cut. So again, no plugins or presets are needed for any of these assets. Just simply go over to the top and go over to File. You go over to Import and Media, and then you select your clips and just import them as normal like any other video or photo. The first one I wanna add is this very cool fire kind of transition. Now I wish I could show you every single one, but I don't wanna make this video too long, so I'm just gonna show you maybe five or six of them. So I'm gonna click and drag this and move it right above the clip where there is a cut. So right between here and here is a cut. And you can just hover over where, in this case, this transition has uh, or covers the entire frame of this video. So in this case, it's about here. So we can just move this over to the right, just like that. And then now we can push play. And that's all you gotta do. And now it transitions to this next clip. So if you press Command R to bring up the retiming options, and you go over to the end, and you click and drag that to the left, this will increase the speed and make it go by a lot quicker. So if you push play, It'll look just like that. I'm gonna drag the blue one over here and wherever it is flashing the brightest is where you want this piece to align on this. So you can, I think the easiest way is at least in Final Cut, you could add a marker by pressing M and then just align those two together and you can match them perfectly and you just push play. And that's all you gotta do. So right here, that could be a great way to add a transition. So here, I'm gonna press M and then I'm gonna go to that transition, I'm gonna drag it over just above it, and wherever it covers the most of that frame, press M and then just align those two and then push play. 